Hi guys, I hope you're well and welcome to episode 69 of the James Layton Fitness Podcast. Now in today's episode we're going to be discussing three things that you're obsessing over which are making little to no difference to your progress whatsoever. The principle I want you to take away from this podcast is really that the vast majority of people focus on the minor details, they focus on the minutiae and they actually miss the bigger picture. So they focus on things that really don't matter to their overall goals of achieving more muscle gain or fat loss. And this is so, so critical. As soon as you can start focusing on big fundamental principles to help you achieve your goals, your results are going to go up exponentially. So these three things, I could have chosen so many different things that people focus on that make little or no difference to their progress, but I've chosen these three things because I think they're popular for people to follow within the fitness industry, and in no particular order. The first one is branched chain amino acids. These have become a very popular supplement in the last five years, and the reality is when you actually look at the evidence, when you actually look at the studies, the only positive results you see are groups with insufficient protein. So basically comparing two groups of insufficient protein, then there's branched chain amino acids added to one group. As such, protein levels rise because of the increased branched chain amino acids. And therefore the result the improved results are seen from this. Now the reality is the improvements were, were just because of an increased protein intake rather than just branched chain amino acids. Now the reality is when there's sufficient protein in place, branched chain amino acids just simply are not necessary and there's no need for you to consume them. Because branched chain amino acids are so expensive as well, it just begs the the need for why anyone would even consider these. Now that being said, there's a few examples where it may be useful. One would be vegetarians, they've struggled to get complete proteins within their diet so having some branch training amino acids may be useful for that individual another individual may be a bodybuilder or someone prepping for a, sh- a competition where hitting absolute protein targets and not hindering their carbohydrate and fat targets can be very important for this in- individual so it can be a useful tool to make up the net difference for a protein target but they don't impede upon their say fat or carbohydrates if you were to have like a, a pro whey protein supplement this there's a small amount of carbohydrates and fat in this and therefore if they had say a sm- small amount of protein they needed to meet but at the same time they actually wanted to eat physically eat the remaining carbohydrate and fat targets it could be useful for this individual another person this could be useful is someone that trains faster someone that doesn't that trains on empty something you could argue you could have some bright chain amino acids pre-workout but then that would make the session not fasted because branched chain amino acids do contain calories and as such I would therefore recommend for that individual actually having a pre-workout meal even if it's just a whey protein powder and a small amount of fruit however if you have a personal preference for faster training that's absolutely fine the only caveat to say if you're performing weight training is just whether your performance in the gym is hindered because of that so for example if you train faster and your performance is worse because you're fasted I would certainly recommend having some food prior to the session however if your performance doesn't differ at all that's absolutely fine if you if that's your personal preference The second point I was going to discuss is high glycemic carbohydrates post-workout. Now we need to firstly put this into context. We need to make sure that we're meeting our hierarchy of importance first and that is total calories and macronutrients met by the end of the day before we even consider our post-workout meal. In addition to that we need to also consider whether we're training twice per day. If you're training twice per day within an 8 hour period i.e. an endurance training some high glycemic carbohydrate between session one and session two could be a useful thing however for most of the people listening to this podcast and most of the people who are just trained once per day or maybe a small amount of cardio as well the reality is speed of glycogen resynthesis will take care of itself if your sessions the next day with a caveat you consume sufficient carbohydrate so again this puts the need for high glycemic carbohydrates post-workout into context the other point, it's important to know that people will argue that you need to spike insulin post-workout. A couple of points, protein is also insulinogenic, so just by having, say, protein post-workout or even pre-workout, 
you're going to have a small spike in insulin. In addition to that, if you have a pre-exercise meal, say one to three hours prior to the training bout, insulin levels will be above fasting levels during the session and for several hours post-workout as well. So again, this puts the need for having lots of high glycemic carbohydrates to, to spike insulin just simply isn't necessary. The final point I was going to make on this is the glycemic index within the context of a mixed meal, i.e. with protein and fiber and fat, the glycemic index is going to, going to be blunted significantly. So again, if you're having, say, your carbohydrates with a protein source, maybe some fat and some fiber as well, that glycemic response is going to be severely blunted. Again, this puts the need for high GI carbohydrates, i.e. sugary carbohydrates, into context. Now that being said, if you have a personal preference to consume, say, dextrose and whey post-workout, this is absolutely fine. Just realize that it's your preference and it's not a mandatory requirement. Just make sure to fit these carbohydrates within your daily calorie and macronutrient targets. The final point that people have a tendency to focus on which makes little or no difference to their progress is this super slow eccentric training. You see people focusing too much on time under tension because their perception is this is the most important factor for muscle growth. The reality is volume is one of the biggest determining factors for hypertrophy and there was actually a really good Brad Schoenfeld study probably within the last 18 months, two years and he compared two different training types with completely different time under tension. One was a three sets of ten group, so a more traditional bodybuilding rep range, and the other set was seven sets of three, so more of a powerlifting rep range. However, the key point of the study was volume was equated, and over the period of the study there was no significant difference between muscle growth between the two groups. And that was the key determining factor. Volume was equated despite significant differences in time under tension. So as a result, if you're using significantly slow eccentrics within your training, i.e. taking, sometimes I see people doing like three or four seconds of lowering the weight, say when they're doing, say, a bench press or anything like that, you're just missing the forest for the trees. You're focusing on time under tension, but by using these ridiculously slow time under tension principles, you're reducing the load you can actually use for that given exercise. And as such, you're reducing total volume because volume set times rep signs low by reducing that load significantly you're reducing total volume and as discussed volume is the biggest determining factor for influencing hypertrophy with the caveat the load is heavy enough so hopefully this has been useful hopefully you can start applying some of these principles or moving away from some of these if you're following these to help improve your fat loss or muscle building goals. If you're still yet to download my free book, How to Set Up a Nutrition Plan, if you go to James Layton, L-A-Y-T-O-N, fitness.co.uk, you'll see a tab at the top of the page and you can download that immediately. I look forward to speaking to you next week. Take care. Thank you very much.